In the bleak and unforgiving expanse of Antarctica, I embarked on a journey that would test the limits of human endurance and the depths of the human spirit. It was the early 20th century, a time when the world was still largely uncharted, and the siren call of exploration beckoned to the adventurous souls of our generation. Among those who answered that call was Captain Robert Falcon Scott, a man of unyielding determination and unwavering ambition. The Promise of Glory Our expedition began in 1910, as we departed from Cardiff, Wales, aboard the RMS Terra Nova. Captain Scott's vision was clear, to be the first to reach the South Pole and stake a claim for the British Empire. The anticipation of achieving such a monumental feat filled our hearts with exhilaration, yet it was also tinged with a sense of trepidation. We were setting forth into an unknown realm, where the very air we breathed would freeze and bite at our lungs. The bitter cold. As our ship approached the icy shores of Antarctica, we were greeted by a landscape of haunting beauty and relentless brutality. The bitter cold, piercing through our thick clothing, seeped into our very souls. Each step we took across the frozen wasteland was an exercise in endurance, as the unforgiving terrain and merciless weather conspired to wear us down. The frigid wind sliced through our clothing, chilling us to the bone. Our bodies, unaccustomed to such extreme conditions, rebelled. Frostbite gnawed at our extremities, turning fingers and toes into frozen, lifeless appendages. The pain was excruciating, a constant reminder of the harsh reality of our surroundings. Amidst this physical torment, the emotional toll was equally devastating. The isolation of Antarctica, with its endless expanse of ice and perpetual darkness, cast a suffocating cloak over our spirits. We were cut off from the world, isolated from civilization, and it gnawed at our very essence. The race against time. Adding to our ordeal was the knowledge that we were not alone in our quest. Roald Amundsen, a Norwegian explorer, was also racing to claim the South Pole. The rivalry hung over our expedition like a heavy shadow, driving us to push harder and faster despite the deteriorating conditions. Captain Scott's leadership, while resolute, carried the weight of immense responsibility. He felt the pressure to succeed, not only for himself but for the honor of the British Empire and the legacy of exploration. The crew, loyal and dedicated, shared in his determination but also shouldered the burden of his expectations. The Descent into Despair On January 17, 1912, we reached the South Pole, only to have our hopes dashed. Amundsen's Norwegian flag already fluttered in the frigid breeze. The anguish in Captain Scott's eyes was palpable, and our dream of being the first to reach this inhospitable place was crushed. Our journey back to base camp was a painful descent into despair. The physical and emotional toll of the expedition became increasingly apparent. Frostbite claimed our flesh, and our dwindling rations provided little sustenance. The constant darkness of the Antarctic winter enveloped us, casting a suffocating cloak of isolation over our weary souls. The agonizing return. As we retraced our steps. Our energy dwindled rapidly. Our bodies, malnourished and weakened, struggled to withstand the brutal cold. We watched helplessly as members of our expedition succumbed to the merciless elements, their lives extinguished like candles in the icy wind. One by one, my companions, who had become like family, 
perished in the frozen wilderness. Captain Scott, always at the forefront, bore the burden of our suffering with a stoic resolve that masked the torment within. The final stand. On March 17, 1912, we made our final camp. It was clear that we were no match for the relentless fury of Antarctica. Frostbitten and emaciated, we huddled together for warmth and companionship, knowing that our situation was dire. Captain Scott, his journal filled with poignant entries, penned his last words. We shall stick it out to the end, but we are getting weaker, of course and the end cannot be far. It seems a pity, but I do not think I can write more. Those words cut through our hearts like a knife. We knew that our journey had come to an agonizing end. With heavy hearts, we watched as Captain Scott, Dr. Wilson, Lieutenant Bowers, Captain Oates, and Petty Officer Evans succumbed to the merciless Antarctic cold. A legacy of courage. In the end, we were defeated by the very landscape we had set out to conquer. Our bodies lay frozen in the unforgiving snow, a stark reminder of the price we had paid for our ambition and our relentless pursuit of glory. As I sit here, the sole survivor of the ill-fated expedition, I am haunted by the memory of those painful days. The sacrifices made by my comrades, the relentless cold that seared our bodies and souls, and the enduring legacy of Captain Robert Falcon Scott are etched into my very being. In the heart of Antarctica, where the cold and darkness reign supreme, the story of Captain Scott and his brave companions lives on as a testament to the triumph of the human spirit over the most formidable of challengers. Their pain, their sacrifice, and their unwavering courage serve as a reminder of the indomitable will to explore, to push the boundaries of human endurance,